presentation. Uh, prior to this meeting, we held a reception for the winners of the Young Artists Program. We had the pleasure of meeting the artists and their families, and tonight we will be honoring each of them. We do this because I believe that a city is not complete without a strong sense of the arts. Public art instills meaning and a sense of identity in the places that we live, work, and play. It personalizes our environment and it helps us thrive as a community. The purpose of this program is to engage Peoria students interested in the arts and incorporate the art into Peoria City Hall. The entries were collected by Peoria Unified School District teachers who then selected their top entries for submittal to the city of Peoria. The commissioned art pieces have been proudly on display in the City Hall Pine Room since October and have been returned to the students this evening. While they were displayed, their talents reflected the unique character of our residents to the many visitors to City Hall. In addition to PUSD, the City of Peoria has a strong partnership with the West Valley Art Museum. Each year they have the difficult task of selecting just one piece of art for their special award. This year the honor was given to Peyton Sampson, the, an eighth grader from Desert Harbor Elementary School. Her work will be displayed outside the West Valley Art Museum Gallery on the first floor of City Hall until March. Recognizing our young artists this evening will be our council youth liaisons, Ritika Ravendron and Brighton Greathouse. So please go ahead down to the front to give out the awards. Thank you. Thank you again to each of the students who have participated in the Mayor and Council's Youth Young Art Artist Program. At this time, we'll be calling students in, the, in groups based on schools. When you hear your name, please come down to receive your certificate and stand for a group photo. I apologize in advance if I mispronounce any of your guys' names. From Alta Loma Elementary School, Kimberly Contreras, Giselle Ochoa, and Eliana Rivera. From Cheyenne Elementary School, Angelina Siqueiros, Maria Rachel Arellano, and Annabella Lilly. From Apache Elementary School, River Crumpus, David Pagan, and Reagan Hall. From Cotton Ball Elementary School, Marcus Kelly, Analia Cueva Montant, and Drake Salazar. From County Meadows Elementary School, CJ Ramirez and Julian Cervantes. From Desert Harbor Elementary School, Amelia Jones, Peyton Sampson, and Ethan Johnson.
the opening of the door. Like that, yeah. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> From Coyote Hills Elementary School, Ella Stock, Rowan Parks, and Gabriella Krolowski. From F Frontier Elementary School, Kiera Rankin, Caitlin Bice, and Jasmine Shepard. From Ira Murphy Elementary School, Amber Masano, Lisbeth Aguilar Munoz, and John Michael Murray. From Oakwood Elementary School, Brooklyn Leitch, Hannah Littler, and Allie Black. From Lake Pleasant Elementary School, Piper Calhoun, Taylor Maynard, and Emma Ahi. From Oasis Elementary School, Aurora Valesco, Xavier Gonzalez, and Natalie Mendoza. Thank you all once again for participating in this program. And thank you again from your mayor and city council. We so appreciate all that you've done for us. And thanks to our youth council liaisons, both of you, great job. <laughs> Right. Uh, we will now move on to the next item, which, which is a presentation, Certificate of Appointment to Newly Appointed Board and Commission Members. I would like to call your attention to the screen for a short video about Peoria's Boards and Commissions. The City of Peoria is proud to have 21 different Boards and Commissions, ranging from arts and culture to economic development to planning and zoning. They're made up of residents and business leaders who bring a wealth of personal and professional experience and who generously volunteer their time, energy, and wisdom to our community. 
These members meet on a regular basis, deliberating and collaborating on various projects and issues of importance for the benefit of all Peoria residents. In the past few years, they have had a direct role in influencing meaningful projects like the Veterans Memorial expansion, multiple public art installations, accessible park amenities, and our Youth Advisory Board even collaborated with the State Attorney General's Office to team up in the fight against tobacco sales to minors. As we welcome new volunteers into this exceptional group of people, I want you to know how much we appreciate your willingness to share your time and expertise with our city. On behalf of the City of Peoria and the Peoria City Council, I want to express our gratitude and appreciation. Your service makes a difference. It's an honor to have you working alongside us as we shape our finest future. Uh, I would like to introduce our council subcommittee um, chair of boards and commissions, council member Bill P Patena. Thank you everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say welcome this evening and happy new year to everyone. Uh, tonight, I'd like to welcome our newest members to our boards and commissions. Uh, we're going to honor you by giving you a plaque. Um, we have several, as the, as the video said, we have over 100 members of our boards and commissions. We couldn't do the job uh, that we do without our, this help, the help of our uh, board and, uh, members. So thank you all very much. If any of you are interested in uh, becoming a board member, just contact the county, uh, uh, the city uh, the city clerk's office, I got that, and uh, they'll be happy to send you an application. So when I call your name, would you please come down and get your award? Okay, to the Industrial Development Authority, Joseph Gramatico. To the Veterans Memorial Board, Donald Scott. and to the Youth Advisory Board, Shivani Ball. All right, we will now proceed to the consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine or have been previously reviewed by the City Council and will be enacted by one motion unless a council member requests an item to be removed and considered in the normal sequence on the agenda. Tonight's consent agenda uh, includes items that require a public hearing. If there's any member of the public present who wants to address a public hearing on the consent agenda, please complete a speaker request form and place it in the bin next to the speaker's podium. This item will be removed from consent and will be heard during the course of the normal agenda. Is there a member of the public who would like to address a public hearing on the consent agenda? Council, are there any items to be removed from consent? Do I have a motion on the consent agenda? I move we accept the consent agenda. In a second? I'll second. I have a motion in a second. Council, please vote. And the consent agenda passes unanimously. We will now move on to the regular agenda and new business. 16R, fiscal year 2019, comprehensive annual financial report single audit report and auditor communications. 
Mr. Tyne, may we have a staff report? Great, thank you, Mayor and Council. And each year, your finance staff does prepare a comprehensive report of our financial condition, which is then in turn reviewed by an independent consulting group, an auditing group. Uh, so to introduce uh, our auditor, as well as discuss the comprehensive annual financial report for fiscal year 2019, we have Sonia Andrews, our Chief Financial Officer. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Item 16R on the agenda tonight is a report from our auditors regarding their audit of our 2019 financial statements. In accordance with our city charter, the city's financial transactions are audited every year by an independent CPA firm. Our auditors recently completed their audit and are here tonight to present the report to you. We have Dennis Osuch from the audit firm of Clifton Larson Allen here tonight. The only action we are requesting of council is to receive and accept the auditor's report. Clifton Larson Allen is one of the largest audit and consulting firms with over 100 locations throughout the U.S. They specialize in state and local governments and are the auditors for many of our peer cities in Arizona. Before I turn it over to Dennis, I want to thank my accounting staff, my finance staff, especially our Deputy Finance Director over Financial Accounting, Sean Kindle here, for all the hard work they put in to make sure our books are accurate and our controls are in place. Um, as you hear from our auditor tonight, we received a clean audit opinion again this year. So with that, I'll turn it over to Dennis so that he can present the audit report to you. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to come here and, and just present the uh, results of the audit. Uh, so my name is Dennis Osuch. I'm one of the principals with uh, Clifton Larson Allen. Um, I've been in state and local government um, doing audits for a little over 20 years, um, all of it being here in, in the state of Arizona. Uh, so I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different uh, municipalities. So this year, uh, the June 30th, 2019 audit that I'm presenting uh, is the first year that, that we performed the audit for the city of Peoria. So there's a lot of work that goes into it from, from our end as well as management's end, um, especially when there's a change in auditors. Uh, but we really appreciate um, all the assistance and, and the help that we got from management um, in, in doing that transition. <clears throat> so uh, what I wanted to present was uh, just the audit reports that were issued um, as part of the audit. Uh, so you have the comprehensive annual financial report and the single audit report that Sonia uh, had mentioned. Um, but also included in there, we also did an audit of the Vistancia Community Facility District, the Vistancia West Community Facility District, the City of Peoria Employee Benefit Trust, and the City of Peoria Workers' Compensation Trust. <clears throat> and then in addition to that, we also issued examination reports on the use of highway user revenue funds, as well as the city's annual expenditure limitation report. Um, so for those audits that we performed, as, as Sonia had mentioned, uh, we did issue a clean opinion on all of those. So in audit terms, we call it unmodified opinion, but it's a clean opinion, uh, which means that the financial statements were presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, if we did have any findings that we related um, to the audit that um, we felt should be disclosed to council, um, those would be included in the single audit report. You would see them as part of the government auditing standards report as either a material weakness or a significant deficiency. And I'm happy to report that uh, we did not report either one of those uh, related to that. Um, so I keep referring to the single audit report. And what that is, is that uh, for entities that receive federal funding, uh, they're required to undergo what's called a federal single audit. And what that is, is that's a federal program specific audit. Uh, and so uh, we audit the specific programs. There's about um, 12 different um, requirements related to each type of federal program, and we test those for compliance. Uh, we do give an opinion on compliance, and we issued a clean opinion on that single audit report. Um, and just to give you a, a brief rundown as far as the audit, really our approach to the audit is we look at an audit like significant areas. And when I talk about significant, that could be large dollar items, that could be a significant number of transactions, but it could also be items that uh, we know are sensitive to either governance or might be sensitive to the community. And so when we plan our audit, we plan our audit in order to look at some of those and test more detailed some of those areas that we think are a little bit more significant, um, which doesn't mean that we don't audit all areas of the city. Uh, we do audit all areas of the city, uh, but may perform more basic procedures on some of those other areas and um, get 
a little bit more um, in depth with the areas that are a little bit more significant. Um, some of those areas that we look at as far as that might be a little bit more significant are like revenue recognition. Um, we looked at capital assets, the net pension liability, and then obviously your cash and investments are things that we would look at um, a little bit more in depth than we would in some areas. Um, just to give you a, a, just a brief rundown, when we do the audit, we're on site quite a bit. Uh, for preliminary work, we're generally here about two weeks, and um, really that's testing a lot of the controls over the organization, uh, and then we return in the fall to do a lot of our final work where we're actually confirming account balances. Uh, usually sending about two to three weeks in the fall. Um, all in all, uh, we put in about um, 961 hours into doing the audit. Uh, we budgeted about 920, so we're a little bit over, uh, but that's expected with a first year audit. Um, it doesn't cost the city any more. Um, we know that it's gonna take a few more hours to do that in the first year, um, and we plan for that. Um, you know, some of the areas that, um, that, that were great were, you know, looking at the controls, uh, management and employees within uh, the city of Peoria, um, you know, we felt had very good controls in place uh, over some of the significant areas that we were talking about. Uh, the audit was, went really smoothly. Uh, staff was very cooperative, um, very transparent, and very open to provide us the information that we needed, so we really appreciate all that. Um, you know, at this point, I'd just like to open it up for any questions that you might have. Um, but I, before I do that, I really want to thank Sonia uh, for all of her assistance during the audit, and then also Sean uh, for jumping in, and then their staff as well. Thank you, Dennis. So we just wanted to open it for questions from council, or for questions for either Dennis or myself or Sean. Thank you. Council, any questions, comments? Well, I would just like to, to thank you. Um, I think it's really important for our residents every once in a while to get a peek behind the curtain of the complexities that go into um, all of the finances, um, all of the financial issues and statements and, and audits and everything that happens um, with taxpayer dollars. You know, there's, there's nothing that's just, you know, put it in the bank and walk away. It doesn't work that way. There is, um, there is a lot of controls and a lot of uh, <coughs> management that has to happen over those controls. So I really appreciate Sonia and your team and everything that you do to make sure that our auditors have transparency when they come to visit us and that we can report back to our citizens that we're doing a good job and that we are being um, fiscally safe and sound with all of their money. So thank you guys, all of you, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And we need to take a vote um, to accept the audit. Is that correct? Okay, so do I have a um, motion? So moved. Second. The motion and a second. Council, please vote. And it passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, the next item is Budget Amendment Sports Complex Operations Fund. Mr. Tyne. Great, thank you, Mayor. And we do have John Sefton, our Parks, Recreation, and Facilities Director, here to talk about a proposed budget amendment for your consideration uh, for some carpet replacement at the sports complex. And thank you, John. Thank you, Mr. Tyne. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Happy New Year. I tell you, I did uh, search my repertoire of things to bring to you as my very first item of the new year, but we get to talk about carpet. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a formal request to authorize expenditure capacity for the replacement of carpet at the San Diego Padres clubhouse. Uh, the affected carpet areas include the hallways, the minor league clubhouse, the training rooms, the coaches rooms, all on the first floor of the clubhouse only. Now to clarify, in your uh, CC, it noted that the installation was in 2017. This carpet was actually installed back in 2013, so I want to make sure that the communication is correct on that. Uh, at approximately 18 months after the installation, uh, staff began to see, or the carpet began to demonstrate some frays at the seams and staff worked directly with the contractors to have those areas re-glued. And again, after about three years, uh, we began to see additional fraying at those uh, high traffic areas, some separation, uh, some other concerns, and the contractor again came back, made repairs, as well as a significant replacement all on their cost. Although the installation warranty had expired, uh, the company did take care of us and replaced those at, the, at that time. Now, also because of that unforeseen uh, 
aspect of that carpet installation, the general contractor also conducted a series of tests, looking at everything from the product type, the materials, the pre-existing flooring, the carpet glue, the installation methods, the active wear and tear of that area, and uh, they've done a complete analysis. While the study didn't necessarily identify one contributing factor uh, to the failure uh, as to why it delaminated and why it is coming up, uh, the carpet showed normal wear, it uh, was the type of glue was industry standard, the installations were correct, the cement flooring was structurally sound, but in fact there was no one piece. But I could probably suggest that there were several hundred six foot tall, 200 pound athletes walking over this area several times a day uh, as, a, as, a, as a contributing factor amongst other things. So moving now into our seventh season uh, with this flooring, it's experienced excessive wear and uh, we're again, it's again separating. So we're coming at this mid-year budget request uh, to request uh, authority to correct this situation. Staff continues to work with the project partners, the Padres, our engineering team, the general contractor, the construction companies, uh, as well as the uh, facility architect who has dedicated their resources to help us scope a new carpet that will endure the facility's unique users and their unique impacts on this space. Uh, so to accomplish the task, uh, we as staff are asking for authorization to spend up to $200,000 uh, in the sports complex uh, fund balance uh, through, the, through this uh, action of a budget amendment. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Thank you. Council, are there any questions? Council Member Finn? I just have a, a quick question. Uh, the, Mortensen is a GC, correct? Correct. Okay, and then there were two different um, carpets selected for the different sides, correct? Correct. So okay. Padres has one selected style uh, and manufacturer, and then the Mariners had a separate were, were, were different subs used, or was it the same sub for the carpet that just used different? They were, it was the same contractor that installed. So hearkening back, and I may need to call on a friend if, uh, if necessary, but the Mariners' uh, selection of their product was in concert with their clubhouse up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. So that was a decision point in our construction process that was uh, leaning towards uh, utilizing their product line that mirrors what they have in Seattle. But the application, uh, all of those aspects uh, are, were certainly different with respects to the, uh, the product line. And what was the warranty on the um, job? Was it two years? I would have to, I don't know the specifics okay. on the warranty right. date. Okay, thank you. But I can get back to you. Council Member Hunt. <coughs> John, when we approve this tonight, will this work be able to be completed before spring training? Great question, Mayor, uh, Council Member Hunt. The, uh, the approach will be to do a interim step, an interim fix, uh, and then a permanent fix. So in still working with the uh, contractors and the architects, uh, we'll be able to address this season to focus on safety and then uh, do have the capacity to initiate the, the sizable purchase because of the lead time for the product uh, and to be able to have that done for the next year. So we have a strategy to mitigate risk immediately and then correct the issue. So the 200,000 is to mitigate the current immediate problem, correct? And then you'll have a larger budget item to replace the carpet or? We do estimate that this 200,000 will correct the issue. Okay. Uh, and install the so carpeted kind of areas throughout. Correct, the, the, okay. the temporary will be a minimal expenditure um, to address the immediate need for this season. And then the 200,000 we estimate uh, to be able to accomplish the fix ultimately. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And, and to reiterate, this will come out of the, the sports complex fund, not the general fund. Correct. The capacity authority comes through the general fund allocation. However, the dollars will come from the sports complex fund balance. Okay. Thank you. All right. Council, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is 18R, right away license, Edwards Hotel, 83rd Drive and Washington Street. Mr. Tyne. 
Great, thank you, Mayor. And we'll have uh, one presentation for the next two items by Adina Lund, our Development and Engineering Director, who will present a resolution regarding the right-of-way license uh, with the City and Edwards Hotel property and also continue uh, with the discussion on the replat of the property. This is on the southeast corner of 83rd Avenue, uh, 83rd Drive, excuse me, in Washington Street. So with that, I'll pass it to Ms. Lund. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Happy New Year. I hope if you're like me and you still write checks, you're remembering to put the right year on. <laughs> I've been doing my best. I should convert to electronic, but maybe someday. <clears throat> so we are here tonight to discuss the two items. I'll have one presentation and then we'll do two separate votes. So this is a picture of the Edwards Hotel. On your left, you will see the current condition of the Edwards Hotel, which was first actually being utilized by our citizens in 1918, so 102 years ago. The building did not look as it does today. There has been many changes throughout the years, but this is the current condition. And on the right, you will see what the renderings for what has been approved through the planning process for what the building will look like after construction is complete. This is a very nice update to the building, but still looking very similar to how it has historically. So the first item for tonight is a license agreement, item 18R. This recognizes and continues to allow the existing columns and balcony improvements that are in the right of way. So for many years, the building functioned without any columns or balconies. And then at one point in time, they decided that they needed to have these exterior sleeping quarters. So that's when they built these obstructions, structures in the right of way. Since that time, we have built the sidewalk around the building so we can still accommodate ADA access and have public be able to utilize the sidewalk. But in order for us to restore the hotel and bring it up to date, we need to continue to allow those structures to be within the right of way. The second item is a replat. Right now, there are three different lots that the owner purchased. The building sits on one lot, and then the other two lots will have a very nice landscaped area and a very large patio. So the city requires that when you have one business, there's one address for a police and fire to respond to. So we would are asking them to combine the three lots into one. <coughs> so as you can see below, there's the progression of photos from what it looked like before to what it looks like now. And someday in the near future, what we hope to see it looking like. We'll have people staying in Old Town once again at 84th and Washington. So the first item tonight, item 18R, is to approve the resolution allowing the structures to continue to stay within the right of way. Do you have any questions? Council, any questions? Council Member Hunt? I don't have a question. I'm, I'm thrilled that this is moving forward. Uh, it's, it's been a while. Uh, that we've all been working towards some kind of uh, improvement to the Edwards Hotel. And uh, this is definitely a step in the right direction to get those archaic uh, plans, which nobody thought of, brought into our own compliance. And I'm just thrilled that this is going to allow this project to move forward, which from what I understand, the owner is ready to do right now. So I'm very, very happy about this. Thanks for your work. Thank and you. if you want, I'll go ahead and make Yes, a, do you have a motion? Yes, I'll go ahead and move that we, I, I guess it would be 18R, right. that we approve the adoption of the uh, resolution authorizing the right-of-way license. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second on 18R. Council, please vote. to do it over again. Start over. Oh. Ready? There it is. It passes unanimously. Okay, now um, item 19R, which is the replat of the lots 11 through 13. Do I have a motion on that? I move that we uh, adopt or approve item 19R, the replat of lights. Lots 11 through 13. Thank you. And a second? Second. All right. Council, please vote. And it passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay. 
Next item on the agenda is 20R. It is the election of vice mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Pursuant to Article 2, Section 8 of the Peoria City Charter, the City Council shall designate one of its members as vice mayor who shall serve in such capacity at the pleasure of the council. The vice mayor shall perform the duties of the mayor during his or her absence or disability. Vice mayors have previously been elected to serve either one or two year terms. At the January 8th, 2019 City Council meeting, Council Member Bridget Binsbacher was elected as vice mayor for a one year term. An election for a new vice mayor in the establishment of term length is necessary. The procedure for nomination and election of vice mayor is, City Council will first establish the term length by a motion and a vote. Subsequently, the mayor will open the floor for nominations. The mayor will then state which council members have been nominated and the council will vote by ballot, uh, which will be verbally recorded by the city clerk. Council, I have a motion on a proposed term for a vice mayor. I move that we allow a one-year term for vice mayor. Thank you. Is there a second proposal for term? Right. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, we have a proposal for a one year term and a motion and a second. Council, please vote. And that passes unanimously. One year term. I will now open the floor for nominations for vice mayor. Council, are there nominations for vice mayor? Mayor, I'd, I would like to make a nomination. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to nominate uh, Council Member Finn to serve as our next Vice Mayor. Thank you. Second. Are, are, are there any further nominations? Okay, seeing no further nominations, uh, we will now take a, we will now need a motion and a second to vote. So I need a motion. So, so moved. moved. Second. A there we go. We have it all. Council, please vote. And that is unanimous. And I would like to thank Council Member Bridget Binsbacher for your year as Vice Mayor. We appreciate your service. And congratulations to um, Vice Mayor Finn. We'll be changing seats soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda is 21R, and this is the election of Mayor Pro Tem. Um, I will read this again to you. The Mayor Pro Tem shall perform the duties of the mayor in the absence or disability of both the mayor and the vice mayor. At the January 8, 2019 City Council meeting, Council Member Vicki Hunt was elected as Mayor Pro Tem to a one-year term. An election for a new Mayor Pro Tem and the establishment of term length is necessary. The procedure for nomination will be that the same as for Vice Mayor. Uh, first, we will establish term length and then we will um, open the floor for nominations. So, Council, may I have a motion for a proposed term length for the Mayor Pro Tem? I'd like to recommend one year. Thank you. Are there any further um, proposals for term length? All right, seeing none, do I have a motion on a one-year term length? So move. And a second? Second. All right, council, please vote. And that passes unanimously. All right. I will now open the floor for nominations for Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor. Yes. I nominate John Edwards. Thank you. Are there any further nominations for Mayor Pro Tem? Seeing none, do I have a motion for the nomination for Mayor Pro Tem for John Edwards? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Council, please vote. And it passes unanimously. Um, I would like to uh, congratulate Council Member John Edwards as our new Mayor Pro Tem and thank Council Member Vicki Hunt for your previous service it's as been Mayor my Pro pleasure. Tem. Thank you very much. All right. 
Uh, the next item on the agenda is called to the public for non-agenda items. If you wish to address the City Council, please fill out a speaker request form and place it in the bin next to the speaker's podium. And I have received no request to speak. And so we will move on to reports from the City Manager. Mr. Tyne. Thank you, Mayor. Just one item to discuss today. You may recall in the fiscal year 2020 budget, the City Council had allocated funding for both uh, staff and resources to help us address the important and complicated issue of homelessness in the area and to help provide you uh, some education and update on the outreach efforts that we've undertaken in this area. I've asked for Chris Hallett, our Neighborhood and Human Services Director, to provide you an update. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council, and congratulations on the Vice Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, as you know, <clears throat> it's this time of year where all the federal, all the agencies, cities and counties that receive federal funding are required to do an annual count of the sheltered and unsheltered people in their jurisdictions experiencing homelessness. And uh, that is used to further allocate resources uh, to need, meet the needs of those. Um, similar to last year, uh, we we're working very collaboratively with our police department. Uh, previous years, we had a very minimal amount of people doing the count. Last year, we made an expressed effort to increase that number. We divided the, the city into eight jurisdictions geographically. Uh, we had a slight increase, or actually a, a fairly hefty increase last year uh, over the prior year, and we believe that is due to the efforts we did in our, our count. So we had eight teams of uh, two to three people last year do the count. We were able to cover the large geography the city of Peoria has to offer, um, and we, we believe we had a much better count. Uh, again, this year we're gonna have another eight teams. We have already have about 35 volunteers. We've got about 15 volunteers um, from the Neighborhood and Human Services, Public Works, and the City Manager's Office, and I wanna extend my thanks to Kevin Burke and Eric Strunk for volunteering uh, to show up 4.30 in the morning on January 28th. Uh, we also have a good 10 or more police officers and volunteers that are gonna participate, as well as we have 10 members from uh, three different uh, nonprofit homeless service providers who will be out there. So we'll be able to provide resources and count at the same time. Uh, and what do we do with this, these numbers that we re record? So, La luckily last year we used it, we came in front of you as uh, city manager mentioned uh, with our new number and uh, we certainly will share that the day of, we'll be able to pull that together and share that with you. But uh, more importantly, uh, we used that last year to put forth a budget request, uh, two actually, that you funded and we're very thankful and gracious of that. And, and we've been able to put those into play. So we've been able to contract with Phoenix Rescue Mission to provide outreach navigation services uh, to those people experiencing homelessness. And then further, for those who need services in the form of an emergency shelter, we, we are able to contract with uh, Central Arizona Shelter Services, or CAS, most notably known in the area. Uh, they're able to provide seven beds a, a night for shelter. They're on a reservation basis that we're able to have available, and we've already been able to deploy and utilize some of those spaces. We're working through a very robust training program as we speak. Uh, you see a copy of a referral card up there that shows in the red numbers the number directly to our outreach service provider, Phoenix Rescue Mission. Uh, we're working with them, the police department, a number of city departments on internal and external training on how to utilize and, and process those referrals as they come through, and in combination with CAS and getting them to transportation if they need shelter services. Um, these numbers then are reported back through the local continuum of care uh, and through to the HUD office uh, for those resource allocations in the future. So that's, that's pretty much a quick update that we promised that we'd give on our homeless outreach strategies and initiatives. And I, again, I wanna thank Mayor and Council for the resources that they've given us to be able to better equip the needs of our homeless population. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Yes, Council Member Fatena. Thank you, Mayor. Chris, I'd like to know, uh, we purchased seven beds at the uh, Central Arizona Shelter Services. Do we use those beds every night? Uh, Mayor, Council Member Edwards, uh, they're, a, they're reserve, reserved, and, and if we have up till about four or five o'clock in the afternoon to be able to place those, and we've actually already have placed several, even after hours, they've been uh, very uh, working with us very nicely to be able to do that. So we're still working on, uh, we just 
got under contract with CAS in December, and we just got under contract with Phoenix Rescue Mission in October. So we're still formulating the whole process together, uh, including a dashboard report where we'll be able to share uh, monthly statistics on the utilization of these two contracts. So they have both been operating. We just don't have uh, all the process kinks worked out yet for reporting. Uh, I know we've had upwards of 47 bed nights utilized. Uh, we haven't had to pay for them. The contract allows for reserving up to seven beds per night, every night of the week, uh, and then a, a different rate for those that are utilized, but we only pay for the first three nights of utilization. Chris, would you give us a little bit more of an explanation of what Outreach Navigator does and what it means? Yes, Mayor, Council. Uh, Phoenix Rescue Mission is a service provider and what they use is uh, they work a lot with people who have already experienced homelessness themselves and those are the outreach navigators who have already experienced homelessness many times themselves as a peer review. Uh, they're very experienced and know how to approach the situation oftentimes. So the outreach is just reaching out to those who may need services. Uh, the city's effort is to really lead with services to get those who may need uh, any kind of service. It doesn't necessarily mean shelter. It could mean hospitalization. It could be transportation. It could be identification. Um, and so they're very well equipped to go out, um, converse with them. Uh, there's different levels of engagement, if you will. There's contact and engagement, and we're still working through the nomenclature on that so we can help report that. But they're, they go out, they you know, uh, engage and see if there are any services and see if they're willing to participate and enlist in any of the services. Many times it will take six, seven, eight, 10, 12 different interactions before somebody's willing to accept the services. We're trying to package our resources so we have availability of those services. Uh, and that reservation of, of the emergency shelter beds is very key in, our, in order. That's the one thing most of them will need that we haven't, and most jurisdictions haven't been able to offer. And so we're really hopeful that's gonna really move the needle. So, so this the navigator services really help them to navigate throughout the entire system. Correct. So find yes, everything I'm, that's available sorry, to them. Yes, Mayor. Uh, the outreach, and if they're willing to, they will navigate them through all the processes. And it's it's not a, a referral. It's not a cold handoff. It's that they will transport them to whatever the services they desire or need, uh, and they will work with them to gain the ID and admissions to whatever the service provider they're taking them to. Really great approach. Thank you so much for all the work that you're doing. Appreciate that. Councilor, are there any further comments? All right, thank you very much. All right, we will now move on to reports from city manager. Do you have, do you have anything further, Mr. Okay, we'll move on to reports from city council. And we'll start with youth council liaison, Great House. I hope everyone had a great um, New Year's, and I just have a few things to ch share. Um, during the council's break, the Youth Advisory Board met in December. In this meeting, we had a follow-up about POGO youth ridership. We continued discussing different methods and routes or times we could do that would specifically target our youth ridership, and we're continuing our work on this. Additionally, in the upcoming months, we'll be judging two youth contests. We'll be judging the constitutional essay contest and an art contest. The art contest will involve covering the utility boxes and youth artwork. And the Youth Advisory Board is working, is excited to be a part of this and get to see all the artwork and essays. And lastly, I just want to congratulate all the young artists who were presented awards tonight. Um, I was amazed by all the talent. I was looking at it during, before the meeting and it was really amazing. And that's all, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Patena. Thank you, Mayor. So on Thursday, November 14th, uh, we had a Westbrook Village Veterans Appreciation Dinner. Westbrook Village has a veterans club, uh, but we also have a lot of veterans that live in the community, so uh, a lot of them were invited. It was an opportunity for us to show our appreciation for their service, and it was a, a nice evening. Uh, Friday, November 15th, held a shred event at Westbrook Village. Um, shred event started at eight o'clock. Uh, the first car was in line at five minutes to seven. I have no idea why, um, but I had to leave. Uh, I had to leave at about five after eight, so I left Daniel all by himself to run the shred event. So Daniel, thank you for t stepping up. Appreciate that. Um, on Saturday, uh, December fourteenth, we had the Old Town Holiday Festival. This year's festival just seemed to be 
really, really good. Uh, they had moved the stage, and uh, there was it was really very crowded. Uh, but uh, the, the way the crowd was dispersed, it made it easy to get around, and it was a really nice, nice event, very crowded, and I uh, heard a lot of nice comments about it. Um, on Friday, November 22nd, uh, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, Fire Awards. And, you know, the city of Peoria uh, has in excess of 180,000 people. We're a big city. We taught ourselves as being a small town atmosphere, and we have that. But I was listening to these some of the stories uh, our firefighters did, and they pulled an elderly lady out from a trailer, a burning trailer, probably would have passed. Uh, they pulled a toddler from a swimming pool uh, who was not breathing, got him breathing again, and I went to the hospital, and doctors say he will not suffer any side effects. And if you recall, there was a young man on a mo motorcycle accident who uh, those who were on scene put a tourniquet on his leg to stop the bleeding. Our, one of our firefighters thought that was probably not a good idea to keep the tourniquet on so long, and so he recommended they remove it. They got the bleeding controlled and uh, probably saved his life as well. A good, the good ending to this story was that he was a senior in high school, and he got to go to his, uh, to his graduation. Um, I'd like to give a, a shout out to the city clerk's office. Uh, as council people, we're required to do financial reports, campaign reports, and most of us don't really know how to do all that. Um, they help us out all the time. Uh, they're always very helpful, and they also they always also give us a heads up when uh, these reports are due. Uh, they're very timely, and so we have to make sure we get them in on time, otherwise there could be some dire consequences for us. So thank you to the city clerk's office for all your support. Um, thanks to uh, former Vice Mayor Bridget Binsbacher for serving as our Vice Mayor, uh, to Mayor Pro Tem Vicki Hunt for your, your service, and congratulations to our new Vice Mayor, uh, Michael Finn, I'll be missing you, and uh, to John Edwards, our new Mayor Pro Tem. That's all I have, Mayor. Well, thank you. Vice Mayor Finn. Thank you, Mayor. Before I get into, do we have uh, do we have reports that are due? Financial <laughs> reports. <laughs> Ask okay. the clerk. Oh, okay. <laughs> to the city clerk. Oops. Uh. <laughs> um, just a few items on my list. Um, I do want to call out the audit report. I know that the mayor did a very good job of of eloquently stating um, our appreciation for that. But there's a lot of responsibility on our end to ensure that we are um, good caretakers of of our taxpayers and. Um, that's a major piece to get a clean audit like that, and I really appreciate everything that goes into that. I know it's um, an important thing for the staff, but uh, it's really nice to, for the public to hear that we had such a great audit. And I do happen to know, um, had some other uh, interactions with Dennis. He's fantastic at what he does, and um, I'm really, really thrilled to hear that great report that came out. So congratulations to the entire um, team for that. Uh, the Old Town Festival, I also want to throw a little bit of a shout-out. That was an absolutely amazing event and the staff did absolutely incredible it was just amazing how that turned out and um, just to sit there and watch everybody having the fun and the snow and by the way fake snow does not taste like real snow i don't know if you know that or not but i found that out the hard way that does not taste like real snow um, but just a fantastic event i know a lot of hard work went into that with the staff and it's always great it seems to get better every year um, thank you to bridget and vicky for your service um, you guys did a fantastic job, and I appreciate the council's um, um, support for me going into the uh, to the vice mayor. So I am at your disposal for the next um, for the next 12 months. Whatever you need, I'll I'll do whatever I can. Um, and then finally, just a few thoughts and prayers out for our troops that I believe are under fire at this particular point in time, somewhere in the world. So um, thoughts and prayers to them right now. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you, <coughs> Councilmember Binsbacher. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just I want to wish everyone a happy new year. Um, looking forward to another successful year in Peoria, uh, starting with a congratulations for that successful audit. Um, I echo all of the remarks. It's such a critical part of uh, who we are as a city and, and allowing us to be able to do all the other wonderful things that we do. That is the foundation. So it's very important and a huge accomplishment. Um, I, I also want to com uh, comment on the holiday festival. Uh, it was a great event, and it looked like a great event, and it was a lot of fun, but more importantly is how it felt. 
uh, you know, we're talking about being a city of 180,000 people, and at that event, it was so grand, but yet it felt so intimate and beautiful. And I just loved being part of it, and I loved seeing what's happening in the Old Town area. So uh, congratulations to the entire team uh, on, on just pulling that off and just taking it to a whole nother level this past Christmas. Uh, congratulations to all of the young artists. Uh, so much talent and love the partnership with PUSD and that particular program is a lot of fun to see those, those uh, proud artists display their work. Uh, I want to say too what an honor it has been to serve as vice mayor. I really enjoy the responsibility and just want to remind all of you and particularly the council that I'm uh, honored to work with that, you know, regardless of what you call me, I'll be wherever, whenever you need me to be there to uh, support the work that we're doing in the city of Peoria. And thank Council Member Hunt for her work as Vice Mayor Pro Tem, and then congratulate uh, Vice Mayor Finn and for on being the Vice Mayor and Councilman Edwards on Vice Mayor Pro Tem. Man, that's a mouthful. Thank, thank you, you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Edwards. Yeah, Councilman, please. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, look forward to a, another exciting year here in Peoria, doing great things with our staff, and uh, hope staff has uh, taken some time off because I think we're going to have a very busy year this year, So, but you guys are definitely up to the task. Um, I also want to congratulate uh, Councilman Hunt and Councilman, oh, yeah, still Councilman, Councilman Hunt and Councilman Binsbacher for the phenomenal job you did filling in as the Mayor Pro Tem and Vice Mayor. You guys did a phenomenal job. Congratulations, uh, Vice Mayor Finn. And I look forward to working with you. God, it's confusing. Um, over the course of the last couple months, I had the opportunity of uh, doing a shadowing program with a couple of youth members uh, uh, that had called my office and asked to see what it was like to, to be a council person for a day. So uh, my staff um, invited them down, and we were able to set up a couple meetings with uh, staff members, uh, met with the mayor, or saw the mayor, uh, mm -hmm. and she had an opportunity to talk to the young individual. And so she did really got a true understanding of what it, uh, what it means to be a council person. And so she sat in on some planning meetings. She met with the police department and some, uh, some citizens. And so... It was a very busy day. I think she was pretty tired by the time the day was over. I know I was. <laughs> um, and then I just want to do a shout out to both uh, fire and police and to AFSCME. You guys did some phenomenal events over the course of the holiday with the Shop of the Cop, your Day of Giving, and the uh, Christmas Toy Drive. Um, you guys just raised the bar every year. Every year I think you guys have reached the limit of the number of kids and families that you, ha that you serve. And every year I'm proved wrong. You guys just over 450 uh, parents and families for AFSCME, uh, 50 students with Shop of the Cop, um, and countless number for the, for the fire department. And so I just want to thank uh, the commanders and all of the staff members and their families that took their time off to come out and support the community. So thank you so much. And that's it, Mayor. Thank you. Council Member Hunt. Thank you. Well, I'd like to say, too, that I've enjoyed my time as Mayor Pro Tem uh, this last year. I really uh, have enjoyed some of the responsibilities. And like Bridget, I, without a title, I will still continue to serve anywhere that I'm needed. Uh, that's what I do this job for. <coughs> Goodness, we were so busy a couple of weeks leading up to Christmas, and it's all because of you guys because you plan so many things. The, uh, our unions just really stepped forward this time of year, and um, every one of them did an amazing, huge thing. A day of giving uh, for Ask Me, and um, I wanna thank, and I'll, I'll probably leave some out, but uh, for those of you who don't know, they bring families in, and uh, some get food. I saw people walking out with turkeys, and uh, bicycles and toys. Every child got at least one toy. Santa and Mrs. Santa were there. I'm glad she got her, her time on stage as well. Um, I'll thank Discount Grocery and Final Clearance. Those are both across Grand Avenue here and great partners for us. And a special thanks to Pat Hickey at Peoria Ford who was the premier sponsor. Um, he donated a ton of money to that event. Ask me was the leader on that with uh, Advantage Landscaping coming in as a strong partner. 
Uh, and firefighter charities, they're everywhere. Everywhere you want hot dogs, call firefighter <laughs> charities. And they send their youngest guys that are still trying to get on the, the grunts, I think they're called. But they provided hot dogs for that event, hot dogs and chips. Um, I think it was two days, I don't know, it all kind of ran together, but a few days before Christmas, I went out on the fire truck. That They didn't let me drive. Okay, so you're still safe, but I did get to climb up and sit up in that big tall truck and go around to 100 families in primarily the Acacia District um, and drop off packages. Uh, Santa was there. Santa got off the fire truck and went up with all the firefighters uh, that went along. And thanks to the firefighter families, uh, firefighting is a family business. And some of the wives and even the kids had been there since 4 o'clock that morning, dividing up the gifts according to ages and, and uh, sex and everything according to, to what the family had ordered. Um, that, that was really fun. That, that was a real unique experience. So take your girl that wants to shadow, tell her some of the good stuff too. Uh, and then shop with a cop. Every year, kids are blessed with trip to Chick-fil-A and to Target. I want to give a special shout out to Heart for the City. Uh, on the uh, day or two before Christmas break, they uh, partnered with Chick-fil-A and went to Peoria Elementary School in my district. 700 students got a gift. That was K through eighth grade. And Santa was there as well, and every child got a gift. And I want to thank our um, employees, because if you ate down in the cafe at all, and I know a lot of you do, there was a tree there, and you were invited to take a card and then bring back a gift for either fourth grade boy, third grade girl, whatever. And uh, that's where they got a lot of the gifts that they gave out that day. I have never seen so many smiles on little kids' faces as this is for me kind of thing. Uh, and then Chick-fil-A uh, did a, a STEM presentation out on the field f for the older kids and showing how the hot, they had their big hot air balloon and showing how uh, the air rises and falls. And I didn't pay that close of attention because not being a science person and knowing that I would never have to fly a hot air balloon. But the kids were mesmerized. They, they just, they loved that. So thanks to Heart for the City, to Joe Eriquez, and especially to Chick-fil-A. Again, they're a huge partner uh, with City of Peoria. Um, yes, the Old Town Holiday Festival. I think one of the things that made it so special this year was that we combined it with our second Saturday event. And while the second Saturday event was immersed within it, and it was the big deal, so to speak. I think where we got our good feelings, our more intimate feelings from it, was from the Second Saturday aspect, because those were more intimate events that were taking place inside the, uh, the guitar player, outside Driftwood, and, and the couches over, and some other musicians. It's just very good. And so speaking of Second Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday, the 11th, I think it's the 11th, is our uh, second Saturday for January. And it won't be that big. It won't be the holiday festival, but it will be intimate and wonderful, and all kinds of uh, arts will be promoted there, musical as well as um, acting and so on. Uh, in my district, <coughs> I'm having a shred event. This is the time you got to get ready for taxes. So anybody that lives in anywhere in the city of Peoria really can bring their uh, shreddable items to Peoria Elementary School, uh, 7 o'clock Saturday morning. I think it's 7 to 11. Uh, they're very safe and secure. You can stand there and watch them get shredded if you want to, or you can just leave the boxes. So that's uh, Peoria Elementary uh, school, and I think that is everything. Like I say, it was really busy prior to the holidays, and you guys are really to be commended for that because you all, and I, when I say you all, not just you here in the audience, although for sure you, but all of our employees and our unions and everyone, you have such big hearts, and you really bring them out on display 
in December and make a lot of families happy. So thank you for that. Thank you for making us what we are. Thank you, Council Member Dunn. Hello, uh, we have bulk trash pickup going on in the Pine District right now. So if you're uh, unsure of you know, your scheduled date, uh, please check our web website uh, for Peoria. We also have the next Pine Advisory Board, uh, February 12th. So if you live in the Pine District, uh, please let us know if you'd like to join uh, the others. We welcome everybody uh, and their input. We have a special guest speaker, uh, Chief um, Mil Miller, um, with our police department. So he'll be our guest speaker and helping us uh, come up with solutions and how to work as a community uh, to to help one another and police and also be part of uh, you know policing our communities. Um, we do have a wall painting program update uh, that I wanted to share with everybody. It's part of our community works program and budget uh, funds are designated to paint exterior walls throughout the district. So this physical year, uh, fiscal year, the areas that were identified were 91st Avenue, uh, Mountain View Road to Grand Avenue, and 89th Avenue uh, to Northern and Olive. Next fiscal year uh, will include 89th Avenue, Olive to Peoria, and 103rd Avenue, Northern to Griswold. I do want to wish everybody a happy new year and a 2020 uh, for 2020. Uh, 2020 vision, obvious, uh, 2020 symbolizes perfect vision. And um, in, I'd like to thank the Peoria Fighter, Fighter, Firefighters Charities, <laughs> PPOA, and ASME. And in my opinion, they have had perfect vision in helping our community and giving back. And I really appreciate all that you do, uh, continue to do, and have done. So thank you very much. Thank you. At Youth Council Liaison Ravadron. So last week, um, the Youth Board met for a winter retreat where we worked on team bonding and teamwork. And also at our December meeting, we identified and elected chairs and vice chairs for our four subcommittees which are the Social Media Committee, Fundraising Committee, um, Community Services Committee, committee and um, Youth Government Day. And I'd also finally like to congratulate the young artists who won awards tonight and their teachers who made it possible. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to working with our great council, no matter what your titles are, and our very competent and professional and wonderful staff as we start a new decade together. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>